Hello, Wildcats. In this video, we want to look at some specific features of the solutions to the particle in the one-dimensional box problem. So first recall that the wave function solutions are square root of 2 over L times the sine of n pi x over L, where n 1, 2, 3, and so on. It's some positive integer. What do these wave functions look like? Well, if we plot our wave function on the x-axis, so this is x, L, from 0 to L, and then the value of the wave function is on the y-axis, Let's see what these wave functions actually look like. So the first example we want to look at is for the case where n is equal to 1. In that case, the wave function approximately looks like this. So this is the n equals 1 case. And we get that by substituting into our expression here, n is equal to 1. So we're plotting uh, a sine curve of n pi x over l, and the only spots where this particular wave function will be zero are at x equals zero and x equals l. What is interesting about this particular wave function is if we square the wave function to get psi squared, the probability density, you get a curve that looks something like this. Well, notice that the particle is more likely to be in the center of the box than it is to be near any of the edges. That's unusual because in a classical sense, if we had a completely free particle, we would expect the particle to spend as much time in any one location as any other, be equally likely. We would see a, a, a line that would essentially be a straight line across where the probabilities would be identical at every single location. So we see for the n equals one, the lowest energy case for the particle in the box, that this is not true. We have it where the particle is more likely to be in the center than it is to be at any of the edges. So that is the n equals one case. So the next higher energy level is the n equals two case. So for n equals two, our curve is at least something like this. And we see this, this is n equals, equals two. So with n equals two, we have two half waves. We have one complete sine curve. And we see that in addition to the wave function being zero at zero and L, we also have it being equal to zero at the point where x is equal to L over two. These type of per, uh, points where the wave function goes through zero, so it goes from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, and hits zero, we call nodes. So this particular location here is a node. An interesting feature of a node is that since the wave function is equal to zero at that point, the probability density psi squared is also equal to zero at that point. So we have an interesting situation in that this particular location is a location where the particle can never be found. So the particle can be over here, the particle can be over here, but it's never exactly in the center of the box in the case when the energy level is the n equals 2 level. So that's the n equals 2 level. So let's see the next wave function for the n equals 3 level. Here's x equals L, redrawing our x-axis. And following the pattern, we can mark off two important points here. So here we have L over 3 and 2L over 3. And we notice that our wave function will have the following appearance. So 
So now there are two points in the middle of the box, not at the edges, where the wave function goes through zero. So we see that in this particular case, now we have two nodes. So this is the n equals three case. And we see that we have two nodes. So we know this number of nodes for the particle in a one-dimensional box is going to, we notice that when n equals one, we had no nodes. When n equals two, we had one node. When n is equal to three, we have two nodes. So the number of nodes is going to be n minus one. So again, in this particular situation, the particle can be here, it can be here, it can be here, but it can never be at exactly L over three or at two L over three. If we continue this pattern, we'd also notice that the number of half waves is equal to the principal quantum number N in this case. We notice when N equals one, we had one half wave. When N equals two, we had a half wave and a half wave to have a full wave. When n equals 3, we see three half waves. So continuing this, we can generate uh, a picture for the wave function for n being equal to any particular number. Now, one final example I'd like to show is what we get when n becomes very, very, very large. When n becomes very, very large, we get a curve continually wiggles back and forth. Now the interesting thing is, as it becomes n becomes infinitely large, it effectively turns into a curve that works into being a straight line. So it starts to approximate um, a rectangular region. And if we square that, we again get a curve that is essentially a straight line. And that would tell us that as n becomes infinitely large, the probability of finding the particle at any particular location in the box becomes the same, which is exactly our classical result. So what we can see is as n becomes infinitely large, that the quantum mechanical predictions begin to approximate the predictions of classical mechanics. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.